Welcome to Doing Business with a Servant's Heart, Doing Business in Life with a Purpose, Serving Others, and Achieving Success. I'm your host, Steve Ramona, and we created this show for you, the audience, because we want everyone to learn how to do business in life to make an impact in the world. How will you serve today, and what impact will you make today? My two guests today are going to make an impact in a different way. A catastrophic event that happened and how Ethan has just come back from it and, and the support of his mom and dad and family and friends. I'm excited to share my guests with you. Larry and Ethan, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Yep. You, you bet. Larry, let's start with the story and what happened. No, oh, absolutely. So um, I uh, recently retired from the federal government, did a little over 30 years with them. And then back in uh, 2020, in July of 2020, everybody can remember that time because we were, were all going through the pandemic um, and no different uh, for me. I was working from home, uh, which was unusual after being in the intelligence community for over 30 years. I didn't know what working from home was like, and uh, um, but we got sent home. So I was uh, in my home office, just finished a, uh, a conference call and uh, it was about 12, 1230 in the afternoon. Um, my, my wife was down in South Carolina visiting her parents. Uh, my oldest son, Logan, was at work. And I finished. I'm like, I'm going to go get something to eat. And I realized Ethan wasn't awake. Okay, he was 17 years old. So sleeping until noon is probably not, you know, that unnormal. And uh, so I went in to wake him up, see if he wanted anything to eat. And uh, I woke him up and he complained of a headache. And so I told him he was probably dehydrated. And then that started to turn into panic when he realized it wasn't just a headache, but he couldn't move. Uh, he, he couldn't feel his left side. And at this point, I call 911. Um, and we're lucky enough that we're, we're literally two miles from uh, or less than two miles from the, the, the fire station. And they were at the house in under seven minutes. And uh so when I saw the the ambulance driving up, I went downstairs. I moved Ethan to the middle of the bed because he was he was panicking and I didn't want him to fall off. Uh, went downstairs and opened the door. And when we got back upstairs, Ethan was unresponsive. And so they quickly put him on the gurney and we went to Prince William County uh, emergency room. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm in the ambulance. I'm calling his mom, telling her what's happening. She jumps in the car and starts driving, you know, the six and a half hours back. I called his brother, tell him to meet us at the hospital. Something's going on. Uh, so we get to the hospital. And remember, this is the middle of COVID. So I can't be in with him. So they usher me to this dark waiting room where nobody's in there. It's just me. And I sit there for like 45 minutes before somebody comes in because they're trying to figure out what's going on with Ethan. Uh, the doctor finally comes in and... I, I call my wife. I said, you need to pull over. The doctor's here. He's give us some information. So I put her on speakerphone and the doctor explains that Ethan has suffered a severe brain bleed. Um, they're not sure what caused it. There's just an excessive amount of, of blood and his brain is swelling and causing pressure as it pr presses up against his skull. And uh, he gets quiet for a second. And then he says, you need to prepare yourself because we don't think he's going to make it. And as a parent, hearing those words, your heart just drops. And to make it even worse, my wife wasn't there. You know, she was on the other end alone in a car on the side of the road. And uh, so he explained what they were going to do. They were going to airlift him to another hospital, I know of Fairfax, where a surgical team was waiting. They were going to remove the bone, piece of the bone from his skull to allow the brain to swell. So that's the only way he could possibly live through this. And right now we're minute by minute. So they did let me go in to see him as they were prepping him. I mean, it was just like two minutes. I get to see him and and, and pray. And uh, um, then they rushed him off. Uh, Logan was waiting outside. I jump in the car with him. We go to the next, to the other hospital. By the time I get there, they're already got him in surgery. He's ready to prep. They couldn't do anything till I could sign papers, did all that. The surgery was about, I think, five and a half hours long. Um, and they kept coming out to give me, you know, updates. It's still minute by minute. And 
surgery was success to relieve the swelling. Then he was in ICU for about two weeks, um, overcoming just the impact. Uh, he, he gained consciousness um, somewhere in between there. And uh, and we, we were informed what it was, was a ruptured AVM, uh, arterial venous malformation. It's an entanglement of blood vessels that he probably had, he was born with it. And we just, you know, there was no reason to know it. And, uh, um, and then it just, the blood flow kept building up, building up, and then it burst. And that's where the headache came. And had he been driving, going to work, whatever, uh, he'd have probably died. Um, so we count ourselves blessed that we were home. So for us, COVID was somewhat a blessing. Mm -hmm. um, following, we left, we left the hospital there and we went to uh, Kennedy Krieger in, in Baltimore for two months of inpatient therapy, of intense. It was how many hours a day was it, Ethan? Like six, I think. Yeah, like six hours a day yeah. of, of OT, PT, neuro, um, speech, everything, because he was paralyzed on his left side. So when they, we got him to Kennedy Krieger, they had to lift him out of the bed with a, with a, a, a like a, a pulley system and put him in a chair. Um, he couldn't move. He couldn't walk. Uh, and again, COVID. So his mom and I were the only ones that could be there with him, but we couldn't be there together. So we're living in a hotel alternating every day. You know, she'd come in in the morning, I'd leave, uh, I'd sleep right next to him, um, and, you know, help him with whatever he need. Uh, so we were, he told us, he's like, dad, I'm going to walk out of here. And, you know, he did with it. He, he walked out with a cane, uh, but well, he walked a little bit cause they wouldn't let you walk to the door. <laughs> no, they, well, it was because of hospital protocol. They yeah. technically legally didn't allow me to yeah. walk out of the hospital. So I, I had to go through a wheelchair, but I could walk. Yeah. At that point. Well, yeah. Ethan, let me ask you, mm -hmm. what made you say that here? You've been through all this. You probably, as we talked earlier in the green room, you don't remember what, what is your mindset? Why would you say that? That I would walk out of there? Yeah. Oh, well, um, like I remember pretty much the last day that I was in the first hospital. Um, like not much, I was very confused. I didn't know what was happening, but I do remember certain, like I remember the ambulance ride to Kennedy Krieger. Um, but, and then I remember I guess it was after either the first couple of days I was at Kennedy Krieger, we had this big meeting uh, where I think my mom was was with me at Kennedy Krieger. We had a big meeting with all my therapists, and then my brother and my dad were were on Zoom listening in, and we were going over the plan. And they said, I I think they said, uh, well, he'll need to be here for eight weeks, blah blah blah. And then they asked me what my goals are. I just said, I was like, I. I'm going to walk out of here. I, I've always been a very competitive person, specifically myself. I don't like to lose. And, you know, with this injury, all you're doing is losing every day. Um, and so that was just one thing where, like, if I can walk out of here, then I beat it already. Um, maybe I won't be fully recovered for a long time, but I know that I beat it. Uh, and that's that's why I wanted to. That's why that was my main goal. What an incredible mindset. So you were thinking to get better every day. If it's a half a percent, one percent, that was sounds like your mindset, correct? Yeah. And it worked. Yeah. It did. How you doing right now? Um, I mean, I'm I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I've run two Spartan races with like the obstacles. I can't do I can't do some of the obstacles that mm -hmm. like have like the hand like climbing and stuff. I can't do some of those just because my left arm is still not too far along. Um, but uh, and then I also did this summer, it was July, we hiked 100 miles and uh, well backpacked 100 miles in New Mexico uh, at a scout reservation camp uh, called Philmont. Uh, and I was carrying, I think, 60 pounds uh, in the backpack. Yeah, a little uh, over 60 and, pounds. Yeah, a little bit over 60 pounds. Uh, and we were doing about, like, we were averaging maybe 10 miles, like close to 10 miles a day. Yeah, little, little, and some of those a little more. A little more. Um, yeah, and you did like was, one fifteen miler. Yeah, and I've got I've got videos. Uh, again, this is um, 
this that I, I love looking at this because I'm right behind him and and videoing him taking these hills and they they weren't easy and uh, the rocks, which are a challenge because he still he had you know stability issues um, and you know he wears a brace that uh, that's an amazing brace that allows him to do this. Not that he needs it to walk, but he it helped him because it kept him from tripping and and there there were some interesting hazards on there like the 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 creek and river crossings where it's like seriously <laughs> you, I got to walk on this little log <laughs> yeah, but he yeah. he was able to do it. Mm -hmm. But that uh, whole mentality in, yeah. in Kennedy Krieger, his even his therapists were impressed because he went once they got him into a chair, you know, and you know, parents trying to make things comfortable. We go out and buy him a little cup holder and all that. Yeah. And he's in the chair like three days. He's like, OK, I'm done with this. I want we're going to go to a walker. And then we do same thing. We get him to little little uh, attachments for his walker. And he's uh, he's he's got it for like three days. <laughs> and he's like, OK, what's next? Yeah. And uh, the cane he kept just to maintain stability through the rest of the time there. Um, and then we part part of the the uh, recovery program there. They have an amazing um, section to where they they play games because the mentality and just fun is so important, especially with kids uh, as part of their growth and recovery process. And um, so we met some amazing therapists in there. And one of the things they had was to play cards, right? Um, well, they had these card holders that had little slots in them. And so if you didn't have use of both hands, you could set cards in there. Well, somebody had made some and, you know, they usually give them out uh, to the patients and they were running low. So Ethan, Ethan's, you know, we're big in Boy Scouts and... Yeah. Ethan was right at the point where he was trying to figure out what he was going to do for his Eagle Scout uh, uh, requirements when he had the stroke and uh, um, came up with the idea, well, why don't we make those card holders? And so when we left, and so that's that was his project. His One of his therapists helped him uh, develop the plan because it's that's a big part of the scouting. You've got to, you've got to develop the plan. You've got to work the plan. You've got to lead the plan. <laughs> and mm -hmm. um uh, he was able to do that. We got it approved. Um, when we left Kennedy Krieger, we left in uh, September, and it was seven days from after that he goes in and gets his second operation because at this point his bone flap was gone, so the swelling has gone down. And but he's got this whole place on his right side of his head that there was nothing but skin, but scalp between him and his brain, and so they're gonna. The bone flap had been sitting in a freezer back in Virginia and they're putting it back in also removing the AVM because the first surgery they cauterized it so it wouldn't bleed anymore now they mo removed it put the bone flap back in 10 days after that surgery he led his eagle project Jeez. and we made what was it 28 of those card holders I, and then I presented them to yeah. Kennedy Krieger mm -hmm. and uh, um, so an, another great I think feat and then we did two months of outpatient back at Kennedy Krieger, driving back and forth from Northern Virginia to Baltimore. And um, once that was done, then we started the long and ar arduous uh, recovery here at home. So uh, on a, any given week, he's at, you know, PT two to three times a week, OT twice a week. Uh, um, plus he was finishing high school. Uh, so he, he, you know, luckily that was still online. So he finished high school. Then he went to college. He's he'd gone to a, a Nova community college, knocking out his first, you know, two years of a business degree um, and still doing all the therapy. And, uh, you know, two of the things that we were, were lost or impacted that were big parts of Ethan's life was soccer. He was a travel soccer player um, and, and gaming. He was a competitive gamer. Now, I'll let him tell you about his gaming journey because that's a huge part of his life that all of a sudden was gone. Yeah. And I'll let you talk about that. Ethan. Yeah. Before we do that, I want to ask you, Ethan, mm -hmm. Larry, thank you. You've given me credit. How old were you when this happened? 17. 17. Mm -hmm. You've been through a lot. You're on the other side of the mountain, I call it, of recovery. Mm -hmm. You're still going to have things, but you're doing back to. Ethan type things. 
Yeah. What advice would you give somebody listening that's between 17 and 35 and dealing with a medical strategy uh, like this? Um, I would say you just got to, when it first happens, you just got to do anything that is fun. I mean, anything that makes you feel joy, don't shred. Like for me, like school, um, I had just gotten to the point where like before my stroke, where I was doing good in school. I, I never, I was never really a great student, but junior year of high school, I would, I got straight A's. I was trying to, I was finally figuring out how to do well in school. But then, you know, my stroke happened. I had to take less classes. And I think the key is like, you you can't stress about school or your, or your job. Hopefully like, you know, your job would be, you know, caring if you had a stroke like that. But um, just do anything that makes you happy. And for me, I hung out with friends, played video games, like maybe a little bit too much video games, but I did play video games with my friends and just, and just tried to have a good time while I was going through this like horrible time so yeah well you get a little break you can play a little extra <laughs> video games after what you've been through i think the man upstairs and mom and dad are okay with it i, I do Ethan, want you to tell this story about gaming and what you did and your you and your brother did mm -hmm. yeah so um i played i played fortnite before my stroke like you know it was a huge game i, I played a lot with uh with with my friends mainly my my two close friends robbie and jackson um and i i had gotten really good at the game where like i was playing tournaments with my with my friend robbie and we were actually placing pretty well in these tournaments out of like you know tens of thousands of players and we were placing pretty well on there um and then you know when my stroke happened i was watching them play video games you know i would be in discord calls with them and just and just talking to them while i was in the hospital even i'd just be talking to them because like i couldn't see them because of covid they couldn't come visit me. So I'd be watching them for hours while I was just laying in my hospital bed. And all I wanted to do was just play video games with them again. And um, I I worked with Kenny Krieger trying to figure out how to play video games. And gaming for me, I don't want to just play video games to just play video games. I want to be able to play video games and be good at them because I, I, I would like to have fun. And for me, winning, I have fun when I'm winning. And, and when you're not good at something, you're you're gonna be losing. So I don't have fun when I'm losing. Um, and they didn't have the equipment there that allowed me to play the games I wanted to play. And when I got back from the hospital and like back home, my brother and I spent weeks researching stuff, and we finally found one company called Evil Controllers uh, that makes that like modifies regular controllers for one hand use. So I ordered, um, I ordered one, got it about, I think I got it Christmas day, 2020. So about five months, right? Five months or four months after my stroke. Um, and yeah, ever since then, I've just been playing games. I got, I got good at games again. I actually posted on TikTok like for a little bit there, got a few thousand followers on that because I got so good at games um, again. And yeah, I've just been having fun with it. What's your TikTok? Shout it out so people can connect with you. Oh, one hand Jedi. It's one hand and then it's J E D E. Yeah. Ethan and Larry. I'm getting a little emotional because I talk support all the time. And what I'm hearing from both of you, doctors, mom and dad, Logan, your brother, your friends, Ethan and Larry, I want you to answer this too. How much has the support been and how important has it been for your recovery? I think, I mean, it is everything that uh, um, has allowed him to recover. And uh, we've got an amazing OT um, here in the area, and she's become a close friend. And And she's told us, she's like, because she's worked with patients and that didn't have the support network. And so, and and saw the the delay or the, the recovery stop. And you know, if if you're a parent going through this, you have to be in the mindset that nothing else matters. You know, job, nothing. Okay. I mean, we were lucky. My my wife works has worked from home since we moved here in 2011. She had a great. Uh, they took care of her, um, leave wise. As a matter of fact, the whole time she was off, they didn't even charge her for leave. So that was amazing. 
we were lucky to have amazing insurance. Um, so we didn't have that stress. Um, uh, you know, I worked for the government, obviously, but, you know, didn't have to use a lot of leave because we were working remotely. So again, COVID helped us. But even if it wasn't there, it's, you know, everything that's important is your family because you can get another job, you can you know start another career, whatever. Um, and you know what, if the bills pile up, guess what? Either they get paid or they don't. Um, it's, it's all about taking care of one another and being there for one another. And, uh, and I'll let Ethan talk about what, you know, how it's impacted him. Um, yeah, I mean, we're talking about friends and family, right? Is that yep. what we're talking about? The support, yeah, the the support the doc, you know, yeah, just, all yeah, these I mean, people. Uh, yeah, it, it was, it was the biggest factor. I mean, of course, other than my therapy, it was the biggest factor in, in me having a positive attitude and, um, and, you know, attacking it like I have, like, I, I wasn't able to see my brother for, um, close to three months. I was mm -hmm. in the hospital. I, I FaceTimed him every single day while I was in the hospital. Cause like, I mean, I wanted to share all my experiences. Um, I, when I first moved my leg, I FaceTimed him instantly <laughs> and was showing him that I was bending my knee, uh, in my hospital bed. Uh, and like, as for my friends, like I mentioned, my friends, uh, Robbie and Jackson, you know, i I played video games with them a lot. They've been a big help in keeping me happy uh, throughout the last couple of years. And also my oldest friend, Dylan, I've known him 12 years. Uh, he doesn't even live here anymore. And I, I, I've texted him. We actually just talked about this uh, the other day. I, I haven't not texted him uh, at least once or twice a week for the past 12 years. I haven't like lost contact with him at all. And I didn't count the the few weeks where I was like in a coma and then out of a coma. Um, because that I don't think that counts. Uh but other than that, I yeah. literally talked to him every single day uh since my stroke. So okay, with, like, with that, it just reminds me all my me, friends man. and all my family have just been tremendous help. Absolutely. Yeah. Amen. You've you've got to tell Steve what your first words to your brother were when you when you came out of your comatose state. Uh oh, I think he froze up. Yeah. So, hey, did did you hear that, bud? Oh, uh, what? Oh, no, I uh, think it froze. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, tell, you got to tell Steve what your first words to your brother were when you came out of your comatose steak. Oh my God, I I don't remember this. This is what they told me. Um, apparently, when when Logan was visiting me in the hospital because they finally let him. They because uh, again COVID. Um, what was it uh, like? I told him to come closer or something. And I, this is like, they had just taken out the breathing tube and my, my throat was very dry. And I whispered to him that I'm the better son. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm still the better son. Still the better, yeah, son. Still the better son. Yeah. <laughs> He's having fun all the way through this. Absolutely. And well, we're running out of time here, but I, I want to pick one of these questions. Mm -hmm. You know, I want both of you to answer. If you could place a time capsule to be open on years, later containing an item representing your life what will you place inside the time capsule and why we'll start with you larry i i think it would be a picture that we took in the hospital and it was all of us there with these cool socks on just crazy socks and it just shows our togetherness because that's what I think I want people to know that no matter what happens, you know, we're together, we're in this together and uh, good or bad. We're, we're going to walk, we're going to walk through together. Love it. How about you, Ethan? Um, I, I think I would dad. agree. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think I would agree. Uh, I like that picture. I, and that's actually one of the things I do remember. Um, uh, Cause I remember them trying to put the socks onto my feet because uh, again my foot wasn't working at that point um i do remember that and uh yeah i remember all of us getting like i think we all laid down in my bed yeah um at that time i i do remember that it wasn't the most comfortable because logan's six four and he was trying to to squeeze in there so yeah That's I, I think i would agree with putting that in yeah and we can't leave without asking this what's your future look like ethan my future um right now i don't know i'm i'm 
getting a plan together for finishing out college. Uh, I really just want to, you know, keep moving forward and see what kind of job I want to do. Uh, I got a few ideas flowing around, but I'm not too, I'm not trying, I'm trying not to worry too much about it because I still got to focus on therapy and stuff. So yeah, I think right now I'm just planning everything out. God bless that you have a future. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Larry and Ethan, I want to thank you for being on because this is a powerful message and it ties to business. Why I asked the support question, how important it was, and Larry, you know this because you're a, a coach and, you know, you help businesses. That's the power of this. Life spills over. And Larry, you mentioned COVID mm -hmm. and you're working and had to leave, but you left work. You said, hey, yeah. Ethan needs me. Mom. No, absolutely. You know, be I there. Mean and a good business will let people do that and take care of family first because that's yep. the way life should be. Um, thanks again, guys. And by the way, evil controllers, if you're looking for sponsoring a podcast, reach out. Just half kidding. Um, but I want, this has been great. I've learned so much. Um, I'm praying, Ethan, you have a huge recovery. I see you on TV somewhere. Uh, maybe on my TV show, let's get you on. But audience, please, if you need to be motivated or inspired or educated, listen to this podcast again repeatedly and get the emotion and the excitement and, and hope that I've received from listening to these two wonderful men. And we'll see you all on the next episode of Doing Business with a Servant's Heart.